I am Father Louis Scurdy with Friends of the Word, the weekday word. And today my guest is once again Josh Cote. Josh has been a guest a few times. He's a member of the Melkite and Roman Church. And today we're going to speak about uh, images, sacred images, the icon. Welcome, Josh. Thank you for having me again, Father. And thanks for coming. This is great. Um, great. You've shared so much information in the last shows that I we dragged you back. Yeah. You don't mind being back? No, here. not uh, at all. <laughs> and um, it, it's your you are a member of the Melkite Church through your mother's family. Through my mother's family, yes. And so the your grandmother that I met yes. at church yes. is Melkite also. Yeah. And and tell the audience where she goes to church. Oh. Everywhere. Yeah, I know. That's, I was Everywhere. impressed with that. Everywhere. I, she's, she's a Roman Catholic. A Roman. A, a Roman, Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. That's yeah. great. And and she was married, I guess, in the Melchite Church? Yeah, Church? married in the Ca- uh, Melchite Catholic Church. Right, yep. right, right. With the whole crowning ceremony and oh, whatnot. And that, is, that is spectacular. Yes. I, it, again, the Orthodox and the Melchite services are very similar. Mm. The main difference between the Orthodox and the Catholic Byzantine Church is that the Orthodox are under the Patriarch of Constantinople, and they're not yet in union with Rome. We should be, all of us should be, but anyway, we're not yet. That's a political thing that goes back to the 11th century when they 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 they, they anathema each other, they yeah. you know threw each other out of the church, the Pope and the bishop, the Archbishop then, and then um, through the efforts of Pope Paul VI, he met the then uh, Athanagoras, who was the Patriarch renewed and removed the anathemas, removed the, the the prohibitions of each church. And it's getting closer and closer. We're, mm-hmm. we're in so much uh, unity, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. The theology is the same, yep. it really is. Yep. Uh, it's just po- political. You know, the, yeah. the, the head of the church of Rome is not the head of the church of the Orthodox, but he is head of and part of the church of the Eastern Rite. Yes. And because that's, as I mentioned before, uh, John Paul II called the Eastern Church the other lung, the right and left lung. Um, what have you learned from your grandmother about the Melkite Church? Well, she's the one that kind of teaches me everything just because she's been around it so much, um, from traditions to prayers. That's to, great. Yeah. And she is so proud of you. When, when yes. I saw you in church on Sunday, uh, I didn't realize she was your grandmother, you know. Yeah. You have your little uh, fan club around you. <laughs> and I said, I said, oh, Josh is going to be a guest on, on our video. She says, when he comes here, my heart just explodes. I said, oh, my God, that's great. <laughs> so she, she's done a good job. Yes, very good. Now, it's going to be another uh, episode with your grandmother, I know. But tell the audience, and it's gonna, this will be a little sound bite for them. Okay. Tell the audience... Um, how you got involved with some charitable organizations in Newark. Yeah, well, and, my grandma's part of the Little Sisters of the Poor. Um, Missionary Sisters Missionary of Charity. Missionary Sisters of Charity, yeah. Um, and who is that? That's Who's the founder. Mother Teresa. Go ahead. And um, my, my grandmother has met her, and my pop up along with her have traveled around the world to uh, Calcutta and whatnot. And tell me, what do you, what do you have at your home? Uh, we do have like one of her shawls that she wore, the blue ones. Stop and, right there because yeah. you're going to find out more about that on the next shows when we have, uh, what's grandma's last name? Veneri. Okay, Mrs. Veneri and her husband on the show with us because uh, yeah. the veil of Mother St. Mother Teresa. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding me? That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, today's show, <laughs> you know I can talk about it. <laughs> today's show is about uh, icons religious images, and let me, this isn't specifically about icons, but this is uh, from the documents of Vatican II, as you know, I've used that several times. Um, A little overview of what sacred art and furnishings do for us. Ordinaries, and that's bishops, are to take great care in encouraging and favoring truly sacred art. They should look for noble beauty rather than sumptuous display. The same principle applies to sacred vestments and ornaments, and we'll talk about that in the Eastern Church as well later on. The practice of placing sacred images in churches for people to venerate is to be maintained, not adored. Okay, be clear on that. So my Protestant brothers and sisters, we don't adore images, we venerate them, we respect them, just as you would venerate the image of your mother or father or ancestors in your own home. Nevertheless, they should be restricted in number, and their relative positions should reflect right order, 
lest they cause confusion among the Christian people or foster devotion or doubt, doubtful orthodoxy, which is faith. Okay, true orthodoxy is true faith. Okay, um, talk about icons in your church, and then we'll talk about what we have here. Well, icons are all over St. Anne's, I guess you could say, right? Right, right. And uh, it's, a, it's a big thing, and they, in the front of the church, they even sell all the icons so everyone could have one at home. Right, right. And it's usually, if it's your name or it's your middle name. Right, the patron. Patron saints, yeah, exactly. And uh, this one's special because uh, my mother's middle name and my sister's middle name are both Anne. So we have this one in our house. And uh, and the name of the church is? St. Anne's. St. Anne's. Also, oh, okay. Yeah, it ties <laughs> okay. them together yes. nice. And, and let's look at this specifically, um, this icon of St. Anne. And b behind us we have an icon, if you can see it, of St. John the Baptist. And the icons always do exactly what they're supposed to do, which, which means the message is consistent. So mm -hmm. every icon of John the Baptist, it's either that with him pointing because that's what his job was, to point to Jesus. Or um, sometimes you'll see the head of John the Baptist yep. just alone, mm -hmm. uh, which is because he was beheaded um, at, the, at the bequest of Herodias. Okay, so the icons are otherworldly. They're not meant to be lifelike. Uh, they're always done in a very specific stylization. The, the name is always on top. Okay, this is in English, but here it says, Matateu, uh, which is Mary. This is the Blessed Mother as a child. And normally this would have been also in, in Greek, uh, Mary's Santa Anna. But we bought this, and, and it says St. Anne. Um, special reason. Yeah. It's my dog's name. Oh. <laughs> that's why when I saw the icon, and no disrespect to St. Anne, believe me, my dog was named Santa Anna because we adopted her on the birthday um, of, of um, not the birthday, but the feast day of Our Lady of Sorrows. Oh, okay. So Mary's mother's name is... St. Anne. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to talk about in reference to the icon? Um, just the uh, the certain style, like you said, it's in there. They all have the same like uh, way that the artist paints them, mm -hmm. and it's it's just it's amazing how different artists could all do the same style. And, yeah. You know, really just. And in in Greece, I saw them painting icons, and they have an image here, and they're copying the image directly. Okay, and, and they don't paint icons. The verb that is, they don't use is paint. The verb they use is write. They write icons. Okay. Uh, it's almost like a meditation, like a prayer. And, and the, the main subject here, it, it's Anne, is looking to us. Ma and Mary, mother of Jesus, is looking to her mother. And that, that very important symbolism because, because the, the uh, intercessions are coming through Mary to Anne, to Mary, to Jesus. Okay, so the it's a very uh, flowing action. Uh, and what is your favorite icon? My favorite one have to be the one in my room, which is Saint Patrick. Even though he's not a, a Syrian saint, but right. um, bring ties with my other half because I'm Irish too. Oh, that's so great! I have, <laughs> I have the Irish saint and an icon. Is Cote Irish? Cote's French Canadian. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a mud. Quite, I'm, I'm no, no, no. You, you're you're uh, diverse. Diverse. You said that. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Um, so th so the theology of the of the Catholic Church, the whole church, is there is a place for religious art in the church, and in the icons of the Eastern Church, they're specific. In the Western Church, we have various other styles. Uh, we'll continue this another time because I want to talk about the vestments of the Eastern Church in the future show. Okay? Sounds good. Anything else you want to tell the audience? No, I think we already wrapped everything up. Great. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Josh Cote, French, Canadian, Syrian, Catholic, <laughs> Roman, etc. Uh, thank you for joining us. Contact me at fatherlouiskirty at hotmail.com. God bless you.